So in conclusion, I ask we confirm these nominees today so they can move forward with representing our nation. Governor Markell and many others. Several have been pending since April, more than 220 days. Others for 130 days since July. It's December. And while I am hopeful that we can yet find a path forward towards a resolution of this impasse, um, today I was committed to coming to the floor and asking unanimous consent. We need to get these folks into their positions as soon as humanly possible. And so, Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that notwithstanding Rule 22, if applicable, at a time to be determined by the majority leader in consultation with the Republican leader, the Senate proceed to executive session to consider executive calendar numbers 318, 319, 442, 446, 460, and 514. That there be 10 minutes for debate equally divided in the usual form on the nominations on block, that upon the use or yielding back of time, the Senate proceed to vote without intervening action or debate on the nominations. In the order listed, that if a nomination is confirmed, the motion is to reconsider, be considered, made, and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate, that no further motions be in order on these nominations, and that the President be immediately notified of the Senate's action. Is there objection? Madam President. The junior senator from Texas. Reserving the right to object, I thank my friends from Delaware for their eloquent remarks. As both senators know, I have a deep affinity for the state of Delaware. My mother was born in Wilmington, Delaware. I have hundreds of cousins in Delaware who are their constituents. And I would note the senior senator from Delaware, Senator Carper, when I was newly elected, uh, proceeded to welcome me into a caucus I didn't know existed, the TC caucus. Uh, and, and indeed, he and I both reflected upon this recently uh, when we were both in Oklahoma for the funeral of our former colleague, Senator Tom Coburn, another member of the TC caucus. Uh, and, and I would note as well, Senator Carper went so far as to call my mother on her birthday to wish her happy birthday for having been born in Wilmington, and my mother appreciated that. Uh, the junior senator from Delaware, we served together on multiple committees. We've worked together. We've sparred together. Uh, and we may well be able to work together in finding a resolution to this impasse. Every senator here knows why I have holds on these nominees. Right now, as we speak, hundreds of thousands of Russian troops are massed on the border of Ukraine, waiting to invade. The reason for that is because Joe Biden surrendered to Vladimir Putin on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. That is the direct cause for the threat of military invasion Ukraine faces right now. Putin didn't just wake up one day and decide to invade Ukraine. He has wanted to invade Ukraine for years, and in fact, he did so in 2014. But he stopped short of a full invasion because he needed to use the Ukrainian energy infrastructure to get Russian natural gas to the European market. Because of that, that is why Putin launched Nord Stream 2, to have a pipeline directly from Russia to Germany going under sea, to cut Ukraine out of the transit loop so then the Russian tanks could invade Ukraine. This body right now should be talking about the crisis in Ukraine and about how to counter Putin's aggression and expansionism. The best way to do so would be to immediately put sanctions on Nord Stream 2, sanctions that we had in place, bipartisan sanctions, that I authored, that both of the senators from Delaware supported and that indeed had overwhelming bipartisan support from both houses of Congress, passed into law and worked. Now, I've sought to ensure that we have the time, space, and resources to be addressing how do we stop Putin from invading Ukraine. And indeed, I've offered a deal to resolve this impasse. It is a deal that I've offered to Senator Schumer that I would lift the hold on a number of nominees in exchange for a vote on sanctions on Nord Stream 2. And Madam President, I would note this is a deal that, that Senator Schumer accepted three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, we were debating the National Defense Authorization Act. I likewise sought a vote on sanctions on Nord Stream 2. In exchange for that vote, I offered to lift the hold on seven nominees. Senator Schumer accepted that deal. 
and the vote was scheduled. Then, unfortunately, the entire package of amendment votes that had been agreed to on Nord Stream 2 fell down in an unrelated dispute over other matters. This week, I have offered Senator Schumer a similar deal, although a substantially more generous deal. The deal that Senator Schumer had accepted was to lift seven holds in exchange for a vote. He said yes to this. I have now put on the table a deal to lift 16 holds in exchange for a vote on Nord Stream 2 sanctions, more than twice as many holds. Included among those 16 is Governor Markell from Delaware. He is among the holds I've agreed to lift if Senator Schumer will agree to schedule the vote that three weeks ago he agreed to schedule. At this point, this deal is a better deal on every metric than the deal Schumer already said yes to. Unfortunately, as we stand right now, he has not, said yet, said, he has not yet said yes to this better deal. So at this point, I'm going to counter with a request for unanimous consent that we impose sanctions on Nord Stream 2, and I expect my Democratic colleagues will oppose this, but as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Banking Committee be discharged from further consideration of S-3322 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. I further ask that the bill be considered read a third time and passed and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection to the modification? I object to the modification. Objection is heard. Is there objection to the original request? Madam President, reserving the right to object, I would note, as I did again, that there is a prospect for a reasonable compromise, and it's a compromise that, that Senator Coons has been integral in working to seek a resolution, and I thank him for his positive and productive efforts trying to bring the two sides together. You know, the two sides of the aisle often distrust each other. It's the nature of a two-party system. But we have a path forward that can confirm a substantial number of nominees in this, these final two weeks of this year and can also schedule a vote on an issue that previous to this administration commanded virtual unanimous bipartisan support. Among those who would be cleared is Governor Markell. And so I would encourage my friends from Delaware Given the eloquence with which you advocated his confirmation, I would suggest you direct that eloquence to your own party's leader, who has the ability to accept this deal and see Governor Markell confirmed to the new position to which he's been nominated this week. But since that deal has not yet been accepted, I object. Madam President. The objection is heard. Madam President. S Senator from Delaware. If I might, uh, just in concluding this particular exchange, um, several things are also important um, to make clear. First, I think uh, every member of this Congress is concerned about the security, the independence, the safety of Ukraine and about aggressive actions by Putin's Russia. Um, second, earlier today, the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee and the Senate Majority Leader um, urged that all holds on ambassadorial nominees be waived, that in the interests of America's security, our place in the world, our ability um, to do the job that we have to do here in this body of advocating for, representing um, the interests of the United States by confirming uh, qualified and competent nominees. They have urged that every hold be lifted. That's the current position of the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee and the majority leader. Hearing the objection of my colleague from Texas, I understand there is a significant gap. Um, I commit to working to try and resolve this in a responsible way. Um, but in my view, um, the right lies on the side of those who are saying we should not have holds on ambassadors. I also agree that there should be consideration of the issue of whether or not sanctions appropriately should be imposed on the Nord Stream pipeline going forward. It is my hope that working together and listening to each other, we can yet find a way forward. One last comment and concern. At the end of this calendar year, every nominee will return to the White House and need to be renominated. It is my hope that we will also come to an understanding 
that every nominee for an ambassadorship who has already been heard by the Foreign Relations Committee in advance to this floor will not be returned and there be a requirement that they be reheard in front of our committee. We can find a fast path forward. I dedicate myself to finding it and working with any colleague interested in working with me to close this gap in the days that remain. With that, Madam President, I'd like to thank you and my colleagues and yield the floor. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us here at Golden State Times. If you're new to the channel, we encourage you to subscribe by clicking that middle button. Also, check out our previous video by clicking the video on the right or a video you might enjoy by clicking the video on the left. Also, don't forget to click the thumbs up button and share this video on social media. Peace.